Shalom to all the listeners of Kango Kama. My name is Chris Dikumana. I'm the host of this broadcast. Today is Monday, and I would like to remind our new listeners that Kango Ka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. The broadcast is available every weekday at 4 a.m. on the Kango Ka website, kanguka.com, or on the Kango Ka English channel on YouTube. Just type Kango Ka. That's K A N G U K A. Hey, I would like to send a special greetings to all the people who pray for us. We've heard that there are many people who pray for us. May God bless all the people who pray for the Kanguka team. We really need your prayers. We wouldn't be able to continue this work without your prayer support. It's thanks to your prayers that we've been able to operate all these years. Ever since this broadcast started, I keep asking you to pray for us. Your prayers empower us. So please continue to pray for us. Pray for the Kanguka team and also pray for the partners of Kanguka who provide financial support to this ministry so it can continue to grow. Continue to pray because God has a plan for this ministry and you should know that we also pray for you. As usual on Mondays, in this first part of the broadcast, I talk about the guiding principles or motto of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. The second is to pray every day and the third is forbidden to come complain. Instead, we must give thanks in everything. Today, I'm going to talk about the third principle is forbidden to complain. Instead, we must give thanks in everything. I hope that by now you do understand that complaining isn't just something that's not good. It's forbidden to complain because complaining is a very bad thing and God hates it. God really hates it when people complain. Numbers chapter 11 verse 1 says that when the people complained, it depleased the Lord for the Lord God heard it and his anger was aroused. Let me tell you that God has not changed. He is still the same today as he was back in the Old Testament. If he wasn't pleased by complaining in the Old Testament, it means that even today God is not pleased a lot when his children complain. He hears their complaints and he is not pleased a lot. If you keep complaining about everything, you complain about life, you complain about unanswered prayers, I want you to know that God hears every word you say. Even if you don't complain out loud, even if you whisper, even if you complain in your heart or you complain in your thoughts, you need to know that all your complaints do rise up all the way to God's ears and he's not pleased at all. I really want you to understand this. God was not pleased by complaining and he was so angry that he sent fire to consume them. The fire was a sign of God's anger. If you complain every day, you need to know that you are not not pleasing God. But the top priority of every Christian should be to seek to please God. How can you keep coming before God to lift up your burdens to Him and to ask for His assistance when you keep saying words that are not pleasing to Him? I really want you to learn to change the way you speak. If you want to be rescued by I am, if you want His assistance in the midst of your problems, you need to stop complaining things that aren't pleasing to Him. You need to stop complaining and you need to start giving thanks to Him. Declare his goodness and talk about his glory and his power. It's only then that your prayers will be answered. Many times our prayers aren't answered because our complaints are blocking God's hand. Let me tell you that nothing good can ever come out of your complaints. You need to understand that you will never gain anything good from your complaints because God is not pleased by them and they separate you from him. Do you want to draw near to God or do you want to be far from from him. If you keep complaining all day long, you complain in the morning, you complain in the afternoon, you complain in the night, you are separating yourself from God. You can draw close to God by complaining. You draw near to Him through thanksgiving. I keep saying this many times. It's through thanksgiving that you are able to draw near to God. If you want Him to listen to your prayers, if you want Him to find a solution to your problems, if you want to see His mighty hand in action, in your life, then you need to change the way you speak, not just during prayer, but even when you are not praying. You should keep declaring the goodness of God. You should keep talking about His power. Once you start doing that, you will be able to draw near to God. But if you keep complaining and you keep talking about the things that aren't going well, you will keep going further and further away from God and He won't be pleased alone by your words. If you want Him to bless you, 
You need to give thanks to him. We need to stop complaining and we need to give thanks to God in everything. now time to continue the teaching called Prayer and Supplication, which started last Monday on March 13. In the letter of Paul to Timothy, we saw that Paul was urging them to pray for all men, and he made a distinction between prayer and supplication. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, you can also see that same distinction when Paul says that they should pray always with all prayer and supplication. In other words, he is telling them to not forget supplication. But today many children of God don't even know that they should make supplications. And when they do it, they do it wrong. Their supplication consists of accusing God. They say things like, why God? What do you have against me? Why me? Why do you bless others but you don't bless me? What have I done? What sins I have committed? So you keep demanding an explanation from God. You accuse him. You say that he abandoned you. You say that he is not being fair to you. But this is in supplication. You are just complaining. Many children of God think that they are making supplication, but they are actually complaining. Supplication and complaining are completely different. Supplication requires humility. You need to humble yourself as you come to ask for help. But if you come with an attitude and you start making demands, that's not supplication. Some people go before God and they say, God, this is what's written in your word and you must do it otherwise you are a liar this is not supplication you are trying to threaten god you are trying to pressure him but no one can threaten god no one can pressure him you need to lower yourself you need to bow to his feet you need to approach the throne of grace with humility you need to go at the feet of i am with humility supplication isn't about telling on others some people think that they are making supplications but they are just telling on others you go before god and you say, so and so has hurt me. That's not supplication. When you make supplication, you stand on the word of God. You stand on God's promises. And you know that even if your words aren't perfect, even if you don't say everything in the right way, as long as you're praying and you are drawing near to God through Jesus Christ, He will correct your mistakes. Remember that Hebrews chapter 7, 25 says that Jesus intercedes for those who come to God through Him. Jesus Christ is the high priest and if you come to God through him, even if you make mistakes and you don't say exactly what you were supposed to say, Jesus will fix those mistakes when he brings your words before God. If you have to face a judge in a court of law, you make sure that you bring a lawyer because you don't know how to properly defend yourself. Even if you know that the truth is on your side, you don't know how to say. That's why you need a lawyer. You need someone who has studied the law and who knows it very well and who can speak to the judge in the language that the judge understands. If you don't have a lawyer, you won't be able to express yourself correctly. Your speech will be influenced by your emotions and the anger you have towards the person you are suing. But the judge is not interested in your emotions. He doesn't care about your tears or your anger. All that he cares about is what the law says. Similarly, God the Father is our judge and he is concerned about what his words say. The word of God says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 that God is actively watching over his word in order to fulfill it. So if you base your supplication on the word of God, it will have power. Dear brothers and sisters, we need to learn to make supplications. We need to learn how to present our issues before God. In this teaching, we will learn how to make supplications about our daily life problems, our health problems, our financial problems, our bandages. I want you to understand understand that the angels use the words you say. If you go before God thinking that you are making supplications but you are actually complaining all that time, I want you to know that your complaints are useless to the angels of God. But the demons will use those words in order to oppose you. If you speak good words 
which are based on the word of God and on God's promises and you speak those words with faith, the angels of I am will be able to use them. The words you say strengthen either the angels or the demons. That's why you need to choose carefully what you say. Your words have power and you can use them to make supplications. I will continue to explain this topic tomorrow. May I am bless you. I wish you a wonderful day. If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.